with uh, the interface. So uh, when we're looking at the interface, um, the immediate thing you should notice is that the basic layout and the concept of control is very similar to Photoshop. Okay? We have a palette of tools over on the left hand side. We have specific uh, to, uh, tools and things that are related directly to the, the tool that we have selected. And then uh, over on the right hand side we also have another set of panels or toolbars that uh, are uh, controlled by the window um, facet up here. So if we go up to the top window we can turn on and off uh, specific uh, panes that, that uh, are panels that go over here. So in this case you probably don't have these three because I put those on there. That uh, and I turn those on by turning on going to type and clicking on character and that brought up this panel and then I just dragged and dropped it over. But over here, the main things that you want to to specifically know, can you oh you can't even see that, can you? Here, I'll bring that over. Sorry about that. Okay, so you probably won't have these because those are the type fonts that I just put on there. But uh, going down, if you hover over them, they'll tell you each one. So this one is dealing with colors. This one is the color guide, which will show you some different ways in which if you've selected a color, different other colors that could match it. Um, this is particularly cool. I use this actually quite a, quite a bit. You have to have a, a good web connection, but Cooler is a way of uh, developing a palette of colors uh, by selecting a particular color and then it's also a clearinghouse for people that have created different palettes of colors that you can go through and search and, and then bring them in as swatches. Here's our swatch palette which is the you'll see is exactly the same as uh, Photoshop. A couple of other things we have brushes here. So the brush palette uh, because this is a vector program we can uh, describe everything in terms of lines or shapes and then we can apply these brushes that will go around the outside so for instance we could have a border um, we can have we can replicate say a uh, uh, a different type of brush or a charcoal pencil and there's a whole bunch of different brush libraries so we could load up different arrows different types of you know calligraphic brushes that we can apply to our lines okay uh, then we can get into symbols so you can create a diagram of symbols so right here we're starting to see some basic symbols for RSS feeds and things like that you can draw drag and drop again you can make brushes and you can also make your own symbols so if you create an icon you can save it as a symbol and you would always have it there to use um, the perhaps the most important uh, features are these features down here which is the stroke so whenever we have a line we can change its stroke and the stroke let me draw the line so I'm just going over here using the pen tool if I click uh, I just create a point but if I click again it will create a line and if I'm just clicking it once then I'm gonna get sharp lines but if I click and hold it down and drag a direction I can start to change these into curves lines so click hold down and drag to create these curves so that's the basic idea but now that I have this selected I can change the stroke and that the stroke is the width of the line so if I want a thick line, I can make it really thick. The other thing here, if we, on all of these palettes, we can select uh, up here in this corner and we show options. And then it brings up a more sophisticated panel of different options that we have. So in this case, we can change uh, the, the end condition. So like this end right now, it's, it's cut off. Well, I can change that and it can round off these edges or I can square off the edges. I can change the way these miter corners happen on when it's sharp. So right now it's at sharp. I could 
have it bevel those joints so you can see it changed a little bit. You can have it round off those edges. Let's zoom in here so you can see a little bit better. How it starts to round or sharp. Um, on when you have different strokes that start to form uh, or different uh, things that start to form a shape for instance if I go over here go to the rectangle tool on the left and just drag out a rectangle I can then start to also in addition to all of those things I can start to align that stroke so maybe I want it aligned to the inside or aligned to the outside by default it aligns to the center but it gives you some options on how to do that. We can also change and create dashed lines. So uh, these different dashed lines, we can adjust the, the dash and the gap. So let's go here. And you'll notice that uh, conceptually what it does is it, it uh, creates multiple segments so when I had this extended version it actually broke over the gap so it didn't it didn't see it same thing with uh, the circular version so one of the things you can uh, do is if you change that now there's there's different ways in which you can um, organize this so you have adjust how the endpoints happen. So sometimes that's a little bit more helpful in terms of like a path like this. You can see how it evens out so it ends on this edge right here. It's it's a little bit of ways, but if I move that it will scale things a little bit differently so that it ends equally on both ends. It kind of divides that equally. Um, we can also on this same uh, piece start to add arrowheads. There's a whole range of different arrowheads and different things that you can use. And it, so the other thing is that it, it knows where you started and where you ended when you create one of these pen tools. So that's where this thing relates to the end or the beginning. And you can swap the end start points here or add another um, arrow to the, the end point. You can scale those pieces here. So you can see how this becomes very useful for diagramming because you can start to create dotted lines, grass lines, arrows, very simple. And then you can go back and edit them re really quickly, uh, which is also uh, super nice. Okay, so we can also do gradients, um, but I'm not, I'll let you explore that one yourself because I'm not a huge fan of gradients. We also have the ability to, uh, just like over here, over on Photoshop, we have the foreground and background colors. But in this case, what it is is the stroke. This is showing the outline. So the stroke is always the, the outline of the, of the pen tool or the line. And then the fill is what's inside it. Okay, So you can swap those around just by clicking that little piece. But we can also click and drag. And then the other important piece is down here, this is where you can add a gradient, and this is where you can get rid of something. So if I click on this and I, I don't want there to be a stroke around it, I just want it to be filled, I can click that and get rid of that. Same thing with fill. If I didn't want it filled, I could click that and have it not filled with anything. The next piece over, again, going back over to the right-hand side, we have some uh, ability with transparencies. So whenever we select, and it's a little bit different because in, in Photoshop, the transparency and the uh, blending modes were related to layers. In Illustrator, they're all related to objects. So whether that is a rectangle or one of these lines, 
it's, it's going to relate that transparency or that blending mode to an object. So if you want something uh, more transparent, you have to select the object or all the objects on that layer. Okay, And then you have the same uh, capabilities to, to make these things opacity and you have pretty much uh, similar but not the full blending modes that uh, Photoshop has. Okay. So that you can see the, the different blending modes. Um, the appearance tool is a tool that uh, we'll get into, but basically whatever object you select, it becomes described as a series of uh, alterations. So whenever I have this selected, it's saying that it doesn't have any stroke, that uh, it has a fill, and that opacity is 50%. So it keeps track of all the things that you've added to it. If I select the line, then we're starting to see the different stroke, the dash, and those type of things. One of the things that's powerful about this is that you can create preset appearances. So you can get objects the way you want them to look in particular, and then go back and reapply them so you can select and apply. Uh, that becomes pretty helpful. And graphic styles is the method in which you can do that. I'm just giving a brush over. And then we get into layers. So the layers here, just like in Photoshop, is the workhorse of your project. It works a little bit differently um, because each layer, each object is actually an object. It has its own identity. So if I uh, see this little arrow here, I can click it. So although everything is on that layer, each one is its own sub piece. And if we look over here, these little blue dots on the side, those are what are what's selected, okay? It shows you what is selected. And it also allows you to select. So let's say I want to select this path. I can come down and click on that box in that, in that, uh, on that box and it selects it. Okay, and you'll notice that it's also showing it here, but this is the particular object because it's all on this one layer. So think about this as describing like the file folder that has all the stuff in it. And then these are the, each of the pieces, all the different pieces of paper or different objects in this case. Uh, similarly to Photoshop, uh, the same trash can and the same way of creating a new layer. So if we create a new layer, um, we can... Uh, have another container okay so let's say that that I want to move this path into this layer so the easy way to do that is just to come over click and drag that guy onto that layer and so now you'll see that it just dumps it into this layer the other important thing to remember about uh, Illustrator is Think about it, even though we have these different layers, each of these individual objects also have different layers. So they can be in front of or behind. So sometimes you'll create an object and you want it in front, but it's actually behind. There's two different ways it could be. It could be in this sub-layer stack, whether it's in front or behind, or it could be in the big layer stack, front or behind. So just keep that in mind. Uh, sometimes when you're doing uh, plans and you want stuff, the plans to be on front, you want to make sure that you have it on an upper layer and that the object itself are in the right layer order. Okay, So that's the big piece. Uh, the other thing we can do uh, is that we can create artboards. And an artboard is kind of think about it as pages. So if we add an artboard here, then we've created two different pages basically that we can build on. So this is sometimes nice when you're putting together presentation boards um, to do those in Illustrator because we can have the multiple boards if we need to make them and then uh, each of these individual objects we can go through and select which artboard we're working on. We have to be a little bit careful because it can become a little confusing 
you know, you want to make sure that you're, you're working on the right artboard and that the artwork is on the right artboard and that sort of thing. So when you print it, there's not blank spots and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, but that's a possibility. Uh, so those are the two kind of main things that uh, I wanted to kind of give you an overview. So what I'd like you to do is uh, uh, just tonight, take some time or today sometime and just mess around. Press buttons, go through these different, uh, different elements, create a new layer, move objects around on these different layers uh, so that uh, you get a feel for how this works. Just to give you a brief overview of these tools over on this side here, direct select and, and uh, the selection tool and the direct selection tool, there is something a little bit different uh, about those two. So if I have a direct selection, if I have this selection, this selects everything. So this object is, is selected and moved. But as you know, when I built it, I have lots of different points and pieces. So each one of these is described as a point. So if I go into direct selection tool, I can go in and manipulate each of these individual anchor points. So I can go back and edit these things this way. And if I have curves, I can select that anchor point and then I can grab these different handles and modify lines this way. So that's where these two happen. We have the selection, the magic wand tool, um, but generally you don't have to get into that. The other is this pen tool, and then we have type tools, lines, shapes, and each of these, everything has a little anchor that if you hold, hold it down, it'll bring up another uh, fly out. And then uh, as we get into Wednesday, we'll get into further about scaling, rotating, and all of that stuff. But quickly, if you want to learn how to do it, is basically when you hold over these handles, I can rotate. If I hold the shift key down, it will lock it into 90 degrees, 45. I can also scale using this, and I can do it. Uh, without aspect, but again, just like Photoshop, if I hold the shift key down, it maintains its aspect ratio. So those are the basic kind of functions and, and functionality. With that, you should be able to uh, derive uh, an, an image. So what you know, one of the things you might want to do is if you've already started in your architecture studio thinking about diagramming, maybe just take one of your diagrams and just try to quickly make it in, in Illustrator real quick. Uh, before Wednesday, because I want you to feel, get a feel for what these different things can do, and then, then we'll get into more specifics on Wednesday. Okay? Questions? All right. Um, oh, one other thing. Uh, I tried all weekend to load up the, uh, the tutorial files, and it kept crashing, giving me an error. So I'm going to try to do it on our, our hard lines here at school, and hopefully that will be a little easier to get those tutorials uploaded. I don't know why my, it was either my internet service was pinging me because they were too big or something. I'm not, not quite sure. So I'm still working on that. Okay? All right. Three to go.